Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week we watch the January 6th, 1997 edition of Monday Night Raw and the match card is as follows. We had Owen Hart taking on Mankind in our opener. And next we had Fake Razor and Diesel taking up the undefeated Doug Furness and Philip LaFon. And in our main event we had Bret Hart versus Vader. All right, guys. So this week was wild, and we are yeah. going to get into it. Um, but first, yeah. we have a very special announcement to make. Um, as so of, insane. I know. So today, when this episode comes out, it'll be Thursday. So as of Tuesday, December 18th, uh, we have officially been nominated for a sports podcast award in the best wrestling what? category, which is insane um crazy absolute insanity so i insane. kind of just kind of did it on a whim i was just kind of figured let's just try it see what happens take a stab you know yeah. you never know until you know um and i got the email today letting me know that we were officially uh on the short list so there are going to be 10 Girl. there are 10 podcasts in every category um but we are uh in the same category as uh, like Kurt Angle's podcast, which you haven't gotten to Kurt Angle yet, but the people listening at home will no. know who Kurt Angle is. In 1996, Insane. he won a gold medal for the uh, United States in uh, freestyle wrestling. Uh, wow. And then he became one of the most decorated professional wrestlers to ever do it. Oh my uh, God. So why are we we're, here? We're <laughs> Honestly, I'm somebody, very excited. Some, I'm very excited. Somebody likes what we're doing. Um, but I just wanted to say that is a direct testament to everybody that listens, views, yeah, interacts with us. Uh, we don't get our name out there if nobody's listening. So, true. so we yeah. really, really, really appreciate it. And we are going to be asking a little bit from you guys uh, yeah, going please. forward. So for the next, I believe. It'll be the next month or so. Um, the voting will be open and we will be just asking if you enjoy what we do and you find value in what we do to please help us out and vote for us. Um, and we can just see how far we take this. Please, please, please. So, yeah, I know. It's so crazy. Very exciting stuff. Thank you very, guys so Very, very exciting stuff, especially because we are <clears throat> a very new show in the grand scheme of things. And yeah, we, I, like, we just got here, girl. Yeah, no, we, we started about eight <laughs> or nine my first day. months ago. Um, and to have reached this kind of milestone and be put in the same category with wrestling legends is so true insane and a ton of other podcasts that i don't have the list in front of me um but have clearly clearly doing something right so yeah it's like you know when um it's like the the joke if like a uh, oscar nominee or whatever is just like they are just like i'm just grateful to be nominated it's like a whole thing but like i get it you no, really no, I are totally like get just it. yeah so just, i'm just to grateful just to be, be here. here just grateful yeah to just be grateful here. to be here. just just grateful to see like the name on paper like i don't even know us alongside these crazy amazing individuals it, it really is like no, I am like just grateful to be nominated. This is so bizarre. Right. No, <laughs> so absolutely. Amazing. No. And so cool. it was something I was not expecting. I was really nope. not getting my hopes up. I was just, we're so new. I had no idea. We are literally uh, new to wrestling. Well, me. But, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of us more so than the other. But yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, we are absolutely just blown away. So thank you. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you guys so much. This is awesome. We will have links for where you can vote posted in the description of this um, episode, as well as all over our socials. Um, so yeah. don't worry, we will hit you with that. We um, will. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. Let's see, okay. let's see how we're doing. 
Coming All right, up. we are on the road to the Royal Rumble. We have about two weeks left, and yeah, eight... we flopped. You guys, we thought it was next week, and we fully believed it was next fully week. flopped. I was like, we got to watch Royal Rumble. It's gonna be Royal Rumble for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a whole other episode after this, which I'm a little relieved because I'm supposed to make my prediction, and now I have an extra buffer episode. Though I think later I will, I'll make a tentative prediction. Yeah, let's go with that. And then solidify my choice. With, next with further week, information with yeah further. but i have a tentative prediction that i'll okay. explain but we'll get okay. into it all right all right so the episode opens with a kind of promo from vader about the main event that's going to be taking place um and it happens to be just about three inches from his face <laughs> <laughs> I swear and i don't i'm gonna be honest i don't think i've ever heard him say words like usually it's jim yelling and mm -hmm. vader grunting and right. and like that's it like he's just like kind of a i think i said it I was like he's just like a caged animal that like cornet like pokes right and, and then like and sends a, like a bull like yes <laughs> fully. and I, so i was like that's that's his voice i didn't mm -hmm. even there it is and but that's again it. yeah it, it was right directly into my mouth <laughs> was no, literally, literally from his, from his, his words mouth directly to mine into... <laughs> apparently <laughs> like... swear to god like could not be any closer he was in there. to me. Well, you know, it's fine. It, it, it's it was fine. still a good promo. Like I wasn't mad. Like it just Oh no, like, no. It was it was, it was fairly brief. I was just alarmed that the opening of the episode was Vader's face. Yes. Like, like... It was a little it was a little jarring to the senses, for sure. Oh. So in our opening bout, we have Owen Hart with Clarence Mason taking on Mankind and Paul Bear, who we haven't really seen in a good minute, not no. since he uh, lost to The Undertaker at, what, in your house, it's time. There we go. Wow, uh, I, yeah. It, it almost, like, escaped me what the last pay-per-view was, but I was like, oh, no, 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 nope, got it, got it, found it. it. found it right in time. Um, So, yeah, we haven't seen him in a minute, so it was a, a little bit of a surprise. It um, was, yeah. Uh, Mankind comes out, does his thing. They had a really cool shot of him, like, rocking in the corner, really playing up the uh, insanity angle a bit. Yeah, it was, uh, like, a cool light. Like, it looked yeah. almost like a window. Like, as if he was, like, in... It was really cool. It was well done. It was, like, almost like he was, um like, in a cell or something, and it was just, like, the one window in, like, the high right. part of the cell that, like, illuminates it with moonlight, and he's just, like, there rocking. Like, they really painted a picture no, it was I, really I agree. Amazing. Yeah, it looked like you know how like um when you're like reading a book and like the chapter sometimes has like a little picture. <laughs> like, yeah, like just right at the beginning. Oh, yeah, just totally. right at the beginning. It like gave like that kind of vibe. Like oh, oh. I was like oh, like we're opening the book of mankind and like it Holy. is we are oh, on yeah. chapter like incarcerated. But <laughs> yeah, that's like his origin. Like the beginning, like it starts in jail. Wow, no, that is a hundred percent what it looked like. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the commentators uh, made mention of when they, I don't know, I think it was Vince. He was like, oh, like, what's like, or Jerry was like, what's that smell? And Vince was oh. like, um, he was like, oh, I think like, or Jerry was like, oh, I think he's wearing like Michael Jordan's like per cologne. And Vince very like matter of factly just goes, no, I think that's formaldehyde. And you're just like. Ooh. It was so weird. I think, I think Jerry the King, like man. So Owen and mankind start wrestling and like on uh, uh mankind gets like kind of pushed to like the commentator table or commentary table and jerry the king was like oh what's that smell mankind must be wearing that michael jordan cologne and i was like what did michael jordan do to you first of all and then yeah then vince was like no that's uh that's just formaldehyde it's like right. why, first of all why do you know that right and then he's like I... oh, when, and then he's like when paul bear is around <laughs> there's always a like just an odor right odor and i was like um but then you're also like now we're associating Michael Jordan's cologne with formaldehyde, right? Like that's now we're making that connection in our brains. Why? What did Michael Jordan do? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I didn't ask for these those synapses in my brain to fire and make that connection, but no, you did that, and I want to know that. why. <laughs> you did that absolutely. Um, this match was great. Owen yep. Hart, so technically love sound. I love when mankind because he's such a like just like brawler just like anything i can do while i have my hands on you like i'm gonna do um yeah. and whereas owen always approaches things just more tactically just just that is his default is just yeah. a very scientific wrestler you could, even, 
tell it from like the the jump like when he they first started we were saying he looks like very like owen looked very wary like he was like looked really freaked out but he was like calculating right like mankind just goes in is like and then like owen is like let me think about it was like assessing yeah Yeah. i mean there were a ton of like fantastic reversals there was yeah really fantastic like it was just like they were all really clean they looked phenomenal um mm-hmm. there was uh one point where they're on the outside kind of like feuding and it looks like mankind's gonna hit owen with a chair but owen grabs the slammy and gets to him first stabs Ooh, him in the gut right there, yeah and then he takes the tag team championship belt and knocks him with it also there were a lot of props in this match oh absolutely um and there was also they made mention of the fact that there is apparently a little bit of a rift between owen and the british bulldog which we've kind of we kind of know been been knowing um but i think they just need to like bring uh bring it back up like reminder yeah yeah i have an inkling it's because that is going to be the reason they lose the tag team championships at the royal rumble uh well that would make sense that would make a lot of sense that would make a lot of sense so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see and they're also take that little nugget and run with it because they're also both competing in the royal rumble like in the actual like they're one of the they're two of the 30 people correct correct so that might create some some drama yeah yeah i i love that about the royal rumble because it's every man for himself that you get to see tag team partners like go at it i always love that Oh, yeah, because I want to watch them wrestle each other because I just wrestling when they wrestle together as a tag team, we've said it literally 10,000 times. They're just so good together. Right. And like, so the rift that's being created is obviously just interesting storytelling, but mm. also like, I just want to see the two of them wrestle against each other because I just can't even picture what that must look like. Right. Like, it must right, be right. sick. Like, it must just be crazy. So, like, I really mm-hmm. want to see that. And so I, I always, that. I always, no, no, no. I always really love when tag team champions or like not champions but tag teams end up doing that like they turn one turns on the other or whatever Same. because just the the psychology of i've stood on the apron and watched this person wrestle night in night out mm. like every day i traveled with this person and then like to be on the opposite side of that for both of them because they both do the same thing yeah where it's like it becomes a very much more like a chess <clears throat> game than um in other kind of matches where they're just kind of like thrown into it without like a history without such a history yeah absolutely that's such a good point like i've literally been studying you not even right. intentionally just like i just through know osmosis well. like yeah, yeah through osmosis yeah <laughs> by, by proximity yeah so uh vince mcmahon confirms that Shawn michaels will be on commentary for the bret hart uh main event against vader uh but then he also makes mention that Jose Lothario will be joining uh, Shawn Michaels, but he will be on the, the Spanish like announced table. And Jerry the King has oh. himself Girl. just some good old fashioned racism. This just... was out of line. No, this man, he he goes. Mm-mm. They asked. They were talking about the condition of Jose Lothario, and Jerry basically goes, "Oh, have his veins cleared from all those tacos and like whatever?" He that he's every eating. Mexican food you could think of. He no, was literally. like, "From all the refried beans, enchiladas, tacos, burritos." And, and then he jalapenos. said something about like under an X-ray, like they they like saw like a jalapeno, like, and I was like, "Oh my really god!" Really clogged in his like heart, and we we're yeah. like. Just like, first of all, <clears throat> no, oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 I know it's, I know we know that we are looking through this through the lens of 2023. Don't come for us, we get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Get we, it. Know, we know, we know, objectively, though, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> still, like, I'm sorry, like, it's kind of low hanging fruit. It is low hanging fruit. It's, it's, you have it's nothing else to say yeah. about this man. You know, like, it's just tired. Yeah. It's it, just tired. it is. It's so, it's it's just like, it wasn't. Necessary. It wasn't necessary. It was just like, kind of like, okay. Great. Like, 
all right whatever just it was just so, no it was a no yeah, for me just, thing. just another jarring reminder of the time that we are in yep. so owen and mankind are outside of the ring and we owen has the advantage for like a hot second uh, until mankind throws him kind of into the like the barricade area and then yeah. picks up this like like a almost like a like a busboy bucket just full of drinks, which I guess were for like the commentators or something, and just takes it, dumps all the drinks all over the place so that it's just like soaked, yeah. and then hits him over the head with the bucket, and then like proceeds to bring him into the ring where he basically has the majority of the match from that point forward, right? Uh, because from that point, he gets owen up into like a pile driver position slams owen on his head and gets the pinfall victory yeah so that's that on that one yeah i i don't know why i was like surprised that mankind won and xavier's like you know i mean he's beaten the undertaker i'm like no i know that it's just like <clears throat> i guess because we haven't seen him mm -hmm. in a few weeks i was like i didn't expect him to, like just pop out his little hidey hole and just like be yeah, right. apart like i don't know like i just kind of like threw me off but like i mean it was such a good match at one point like owen hart like bit the mandible claw oh, and what i did i did love absolutely about, bit him just for dear just, life and he was not on it with his little teeth on his mm -hmm. fingers great love to see it what i do did love about this matchup is that both of them like owen hart fights dirty and mankind fights like without restraint which yes. is like same same but different right like it's not like mankind is intentionally like i'm gonna like Slap, slap you with the title belt like he just kind of like uses what's around him because he's so manic like he'll just grab the chair right. or like grab the bucket or whatever and like owen hart will be like more intentional like you were saying like he's more calculating but it is like still the same flavor of just like right. anything can happen like right owen hart hung out uh hung him out on the barricade oh on the Man yeah on, on the, the barricade the steel like, barricade which is yes the barricade is is like generous because it's really Gener just like, it's like a, a very fence. thin steel like yeah great that he yeah. just got like just absolutely just tossed over just like skewered by yeah Ooh. like it was it was very it gave like no holds barred energy like the ref was like i guess like half blind like i don't know because so many <laughs> yeah. things happen that like mm -hmm. were just so crazy but that's i just that was um an interesting juxtaposition of like the different ways that like wrestlers kind of like push the boundaries like mankind I, is just feral and then owen hart is calculating just yeah, interesting it's just like two like it, it how they approach like being a heel or like a bad guy is very different. yes oh true 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 yeah totally yeah we're yeah we're like that. you're very you're very you're like spot on like mankind is just so manic that like he's dangerous because like you just don't know what is right. happening whereas yeah. Owen is dangerous because he knows exactly how he's going to do it. Yes. And okay. It's, yes. Exactly. <laughs> like, and that's what's like, it's like, that's intimidating in a whole other sense where it's like, now I got to like, look out for like you intentionally trying to be like a sneaky, like, mm. Oh my God. Whereas like even... mankind, you just can't prepare for really because he hasn't prepared. I don't even know which I would find worse. I honestly, I don't know. I don't know. That would be really hard. This was actually like, now that I'm thinking about it, it really is like low key what a great matchup that was. Like just mm -hmm. to even like put that in your brain. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I, they knew what they were doing bookending this with hearts this episode. Honestly, true. I didn't even think of that either. Hello, like wake mm -hmm. up. Like, they, wow. They knew what they were doing. It was great. Totally. So after that, we get to the backstage kind of area where Shawn Michaels is with Jose Lothario and Jose Lothario's son, Pete, who has made, <laughs> has made his little debut. Um, yeah, in his, in his 10 gallon hat. Oh, absolutely. He said, don't mess with Texas girl. Um, So basically, uh, Shawn just kind of goes on about, you know, Psycho Sid. Once again, you know, he recaps what he has done to Jose Lothario. They talk to Pete for like a hot minute, just basically being like, oh, like you've been taking good care of your father. He's been mm -hmm. like, yeah, like what Psycho Sid did to like our family, like really scared us. Like we thought we were going to lose him. Blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. Um, And then Sean goes like, that's right. You've pissed off the whole like Lothario family and you've pissed yeah. me off. Um, so you're going to have to deal with the consequences of that. Um, And then he's and asked about, oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm sorry. I was going to say, and then did Pete mention, like, if I have to jump in at the Royal Rumble, I will? Yes. Or something? Yes, Because yes, I was yes. like, 
I'm like, can we talk about the Royal Rumble? Because things happen later we'll get to. Right. And I'm absolutely. like, I'm like, mm-hmm. Pete? Pete? And then after that, Vince asks uh, Sean about joining them on commentary. And he's like, you're not going to interfere, are you? And he's like, I would never. I would never. I've promised once. I've promised twice. I would never. I Literally, like, that. you half expect him to just be, like, turned around with, like, his hands just, like. Yep, like, <laughs> oh my god, Louis smacked my like, <laughs> Trying to imitate John Michaels. I, like, yeah, he just, you just expect him to be, like, doing, like, I would never do that. No, I'm, fully. Ju- like, that doesn't full, sound like me. Uh, I would die if just one day he just does the Debbie Ryan and, like, doesn't even, like, realize it just. Oh he God. has to. We're, like, because, like, that is like, the pet. Oh, just, like, me? Like, I would never. Yeah, seriously. I love like, it. I am or, loving. Like, or she's like. No. Fully. Oh, my God. I bet he will. I God. God, please. <laughs> because, like, Don't I am living for this new flavor of Shawn Michaels. That I just, love him. That he's just dunked himself in petty. Like, he's just like, you know what? I don't even care anymore. I was like. Fully. He said later on on commentary, he's like, "Get being nice has gotten me nowhere." So I clearly, mean, clearly, I don't care anymore. I don't need allies. I don't need friends. I was like, "It's just me, myself, and I." And I was like, "Oh, no friends in the like, no friends in the industry." So crazy. I love it. I love. He's like literally just like this. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like mm, that's just his like whole waiting. personality right now. <laughs> just like uh, just try it. Just try it. I can never do that. Like, just right in the pocket. So, to further the uh, Ahmed Johnson, Farouk slash Nation of Domination um, storyline, we got to cut to uh, what is their newest show? What is Saturday Night? Saturday Night Fever Unhinged Nightmare Fantasy. I do not even... (laughs) So essentially, Crush was taking on Ahmed Johnson during this match, in which basically it boiled down to all of the Nation of Domination essentially like attacking Ahmed Johnson until they fight outside, where Ahmed Johnson pulls one of the members of the Nation onto a car and performs a pile driver on him just on the roof of the car. On a sedan. And honestly wrestler of the week is that sedan who didn't uh, immediately collapse under the weight of the both of them i mean i'm saying they don't build them like that anymore that's crazy no i don't you guys have to remind us what the name of the show is because i don't remember but if i could go back in time the way i would be at this show is crazy because it's like they basically like and i'm sure you guys who have been watching wrestling know what this is i i've just i've never seen anything like this where it's like they announce some like random location in New York and they're like, yeah, come through for a show on it's Saturday night, like at night, like super late. And it's like unhinged wrestling. Like the ring is like on is like floor level. Basically, everyone's just in there. It's like a club. It's like a warehouse club, but there's wrestling and it gets mm-hmm. so crazy in there just from the clips that we've seen. Yes. It I'm going to talk so- about the next clip, which is just absolute insanity. Hey, I was like, though, I would be in there so quick. Like, just because that is just the type of unhinged shenanigans I want to witness. Uh, I'm going to save the next clip for when it when it ties into the episode. Yeah. But what, the, what else happened on this show? Absolute insanity. And this is following us saying that Ahmed Johnson did a pile driver on top of a car in the streets on 56th Street in New York. Right. There's more. There's more. <laughs> and it, it is, and it eclipses. It, by like, a long time. But eclipses it by a mile. So we're going to get to that. Hold on. Hold on, hold, hold on, on, hold on. Hold on. First, we have to get to this tag team match, which is Fake Diesel and Razor taking on Doug Furness and Philip LaFon. Yep. Doug Furness and Philip LaFon undefeated up to this point. Yep. Since their debut. For some reason, the Honky Tonk Man is on commentary for this one. He's still on the look for his, like, I feel like he's having his own show of, like, America's Next Top Model. But, like, he's the only one aware that the show is going on. A hundred percent. I. It's almost even more like America's Got Talent. You know what? You're actually right. You're, but like he, right. like if he had a button with like the X, like the er, uh, like he would do that, like no, without oh, a doubt. fully, fully, because like throughout the match, he, like one of the contestants would be like doing something, and he'd be like, oh, like 
they'll be like, what do you think about him? And he's like, mm, I don't know. Like, can he sing know. and dance and play guitar? Like, and you're just like, I I don't know. I was like, he's his wrestling right a- now. I didn't see him pull out his guitar. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, what do you want me to do? Like, do a home check? Like, what are you talking about? It's like- a very specific person that he's looking for. It's like, a these are a- list. These are a lot of characteristics that need to be met. He needs to be able to sing, dance, play guitar, and apparently never lose. Like, these but, are, like... But, and this like, is why I'm saying my theory, I just feel like it has to be Double J. It would make who, the most sense. Who it would, else It is, would make the most sense, honestly. Like, Razor Ramon is not getting a guitar and singing while he walks in. Like, that's just... I just don't understand. Razor that. Ramon, like, barely opens his mouth to, like, insult, like, when he's, like, that's, walking down. He's just that's like, it. Oh, he's just got know. that little toothpick in. And uh-huh. he does nothing. Right. So, like, I to me, I'm like this long list of requirements. The only one in my mind that fits it is is Double J. Right. That's it. So that's our prediction. That's I'm. That's I'm. I feel strong about that. And if not, I have no idea who else is the sleeper cell with the karaoke vibe somewhere in the in the locker room. But <laughs> right, I got yeah. no idea. I got no idea. So, uh, inconspicuous by his absence on commentary was Jim Ross who has been present for every single moment that Razor and Diesel have been on television he is so since toxic. they were reintroduced to us. He is like, like a toxic boyfriend to them. Like he just like love bombed them in the beginning and then like mm-hmm. briefly mentioned, he's like, I don't know, I'm not really feeling it anymore. And then literally fully ghosted them. Ghosted them. Fully, fully ghosted them. High them. and dry. Just like, high and dry. No, nothing for you. Nothing. Nothing for you. Nothing to say. So, oh, we had this wild moment on commentary. So there is this moment where Honkin, the honky tonk man is like talking about his hair and like, uh, he was like, oh, they ask him about like one of the competitors, like is, if his hair, oh, Razor Ramon, if his hair was like greasy enough, like the vibe like for him. And yeah. the honky tonk man's, oh, like a little dabble do ya. And he's like, oh, you could use some of that King. And Vince goes, oh, like, do you even like need that with all of that? Like, do you wear the crown like everywhere, like every day? And then Jerry turns around and is like, do you wear that toupee every day? And which is, you know, like Jerry, you know, we love to see it. But yeah, what Vince answered with was like, he goes, I have a number of them. And like, then he goes, like, I wear oh, different like, never ones mind. Di- and, different and like, day. And then he's like, wait, never mind. Right. And we were just like, uh, Vince McMahon admits he wears toupees live on air. Like, and has like multiple ones for different days. Like, what are they labeled? Like Monday, Wednesday, Monday through Wednesday. It's giving Thursday, Moira Friday's- from Schitt's Creek swear to go where, all the way where he that has them all just like on the wall yes and they like... all have legit names and personalities mm. like he has i know he has a weekend to pay mm. i just know it like one specifically for weekends oh uh, i mean i feel like you gotta oh oh if you're gonna do it you gotta have a weekend one like because that one's <laughs> gonna get rowdy it's gonna go out it's gonna have different flavors and like it you have to like i'm not wearing my one my monday to pay on a saturday night that's just crazy yeah what do you take so... me for a fool, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Um. So. Oh my god. We had a little moment like during this match where it looked like Razor was gonna go for the tag to Diesel, and oh, Diesel just like oh, didn't yeah. take the tag. So I don't he was know. Like... I don't know if that is like <laughs> a mistake as far as like Razor wasn't supposed to go for the tag at that point, or if it's supposed to be like building to something. I oh. couldn't tell. Like I couldn't tell because yeah. they are going they are also both participants in the Royal Rumble match as well mm-hmm. as having a tag. No, not them. I'm lying. They're yeah, Razor and Diesel are both participants in the match. So this may be kind of like the like starting to separate. Oh, because two. also the necklace thing happened. Yeah, <laughs> like a couple weeks ago. That's why I'm like, mm, oh, like God, what's going on? Maybe so this insane. is like a slow burn, you know? It's very slow if it is a slow burn. They're yeah, slow, that... they are very slowly sowing the seeds of discord. Right. It is yet to fruit. But right. we are anxiously waiting. Oh, that's a good point. Because literally he was like, he like put his hand out and like literally Diesel was, well, he was like, I've never seen that man before in my life. Right. Like had his hands <laughs> like, on his hips was just like, I was like, um. He's like, have you didn't, seen this? They didn't scene? mention it on like commentary. So that's right. what made me believe that it was like, th- he may have just like, skip like, the part nah. in his head about what they were supposed to be doing and just right. like i don't know it was weird it was chunky was um weird. but this match is like phenomenal for three reasons one 
Diesel showed out as far as for his team. Right. Razor didn't really have much. He no. was like getting like anytime Razor was in the like match, it wasn't going his way. When Diesel would Bad. come into the match, his power and his size was like harder to contend for the other two. A hundred percent. Doug Furness and Philip Lafon are like suplex masters. They I will throw them. you around. And if they, they do are the, like physically able. And they like, do the craziest reversals. Oh, absolute insanity. The they're craziest. they're so and it's bec- like it's because they've been a team for a lot longer than we have seen them. Right. Uh, they're so seamless. They are very in sync. They're like right there with each other, which is yeah. phenomenal to see. Um so they did a maneuver which I wanted to just call out, which was um, the sunset flip, like, drop kick that they did. So, essentially, that's when one of them, like, flips over their opponent and tries to, like, bring them down into, like, that pinning predicament where their uh-huh. legs are, like, over their shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was trying to do it on Diesel, who's, a, like, a massive, just, like, just statue of muscle. So, he, like, he wasn't doing it. So, um uh, Philip, Lo- oh no, sorry, Doug Furness hits him with the drop kick and like knocks him over, and they get a they get Teamwork. a close call, but it wasn't quite the finisher. They don't get that until they get Razor up into the electric chair, which is when they have him up on one of their shoulders, um, mm-hmm. and then hits him with the the clothesline from the middle rope, which gives Furness and Lafon the victory, which means they are still undefeated heading into their tag team championship match against Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. I'm really excited. I love them so much. They are so good. Mm -hmm. Like just outrageously good. Mm -hmm. I like don't, I don't even, they're so talented, like tactical, athletic. They do these insane moves. The electric chair was wild. Even the one, the move that you pointed out, like the teamwork and like, Diesel's like wobbling, like it's it was literally like taking down a tree, and like he like, oh, absolutely. I don't know, I don't even know, like I don't even have the words. I'm just really excited because I I would love to see them. I'm like excited to see them fight for the the title because I feel like it's gonna be sick. And especially because the kind of wrestlers that they are is very complementary to the kind of wrestlers that Owen is yes, in particular exactly. as far as their team goes. Um, the British Bulldog's more of like a power wrestler, but like, he can get technical, but really he's just like just like an ox. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's just built like so yeah. um as far as like I am I think it will be just a very like technically pleasing match. Uh, yeah for sure and because they're like you said they're so in sync and like the fact that british bulldog and owen are having their problems could spell um, there's gonna be a disaster for there's gonna be some sillies some silly mistakes i'm gonna tell you that right now i just Uh, know it amen so after that match we get a recap of uh gold dust versus triple h from the prior uh, week, which of course ended with, um, how, how did this end? This ended in the most chaotic fashion ever. So Where? it ends with Triple H trying to everyone's kidnap dead. Marlena, <laughs> um, and then he gets stopped by Mark Miro. Th- he throws Marlena into Mark Miro. They all get taken down by Goldust. Yeah, it's a mess. Chaos. They do go into. Um, announced that next week we are going to see Goldust teaming with Mark Miro to take on Jerry the King Lawler and Triple H. So, that being said, we also get a cut to that Saturday night show once again. And Goldust is having a match. I don't even remember who it's against. The Sultan. The Sultan. And he's got him in the camel clutch. Ah, yes. So the Sultan has uh Goldus in the camel clutch yes. and they I go say... good for you. Okay. Good for you. I knew me. that. Look. Okay. I love Sorry, that. Go, love that. On. Love that. I'm I'm carry so on. Proud. Carry um, on. So um Goldus is in the camel clutch. And what does Marlena <laughs> do to Girl. stand by her man? She takes she runs up onto the ring apron and she's wearing a little like like a kind of like top. a shoulderless little over the top moment. Be a little halter top. She takes it and just flashes the Sultan and the entire audience. 
just absolutely tits out, no given, none. She said, none. She said, you could see it all, baby. She, she said, said, tits out right for my Main man. Street. Swear to God, tits out for my man. And that's that. And I get it and I respect it. But like, literally, this, like, there were people were like taking pictures. It was crazy. So, Sultan, they're like, I don't know. Like, they're, I didn't even see Goldust. Like, whatever. I, I was just like so fixated on what happened with Marlena. Obviously, we didn't see anything. Like, it's right. just her back. But like, it's just the, you just see the Sultan and then this whole crowd of people. And she Taking, just like, and mind you, these are photos that they have, like, this is 1996. They have to go somewhere and get these develop photos them. developed. Oh my God. <laughs> like, this is not this is, iPhone this is, 11. This is the no digital cameras. No cell phones that could take pictures. They oh. they were committed to getting committed. that on film. And they like, said, I get it. Oh, if I was there, uh, for sure. That's a, that is a that moment picture. to remember. I hope I and not because I'm a like I need to see Marlena's tits, but like I just I bet that picture is like iconic. Like she's like oh, in absolutely. a ring in a basement warehouse kind of situation. Like there's minimal lighting. It's just a crowd of random people on like a Saturday night in New York City in 1996. Right. And like she just takes her tits out. Like and the Sultan is like flabbergasted. And then Bob Backlund, who's oh, there, is having got, a conniption. Literally has an mind. apoplectic seizure. And like, like throwing up. his like suit jacket like over her, like trying to like, He's like Jesus, the female body. No, Please. oh, absolutely. Which is hilarious Love because it. if you remember, like way back that one time on commentary where he's all like talking about like celibacy and yep. like bringing back something to like America, and I was just like, <sighs> this couldn't have been a better situation. Oh, it, no, literally, he. It, it could not have been juxtaposed better by a better, like, having Bob Backlund in that situation made it even more it's, jarring. Because... It's already insane. And mm -hmm. then Bob Backlund's reaction, like, l like elevates it even farther than you could possibly. Because oh. you're just shocked. You're like, oh, my God. And then Bob Backlund's running up and throwing the thing. And, like, it's... Sultan, like, let's go of gold dust. Like, it's a, it's it a whole so mess. Bad. And now you guys understand, like, I want to go. I like, want to go. I, I want to go. Like, imagine I, having like, a want... in a plastic cup and you're watching and then Marlena takes her tits out and, like, the salt in it. Like, Let's bring back late, late wrestling. Late, late night wrestling. Let's yes. Let's hit me with that, like, after the late show, after the late, late show. Like, give me that uncensored, like, all the Crazy kids are tucked shit. in bed. Like, wild, wild wrestling. Bring it back. And I want, like, a password at the door. So, like that you have to be like in the club, like to like you get the, the text and it's like the password is like Bob Backlund smells. And like you have to like go to knock on the door. Oh no, like a speakeasy. I yes. want it. I want it. I so, want that. I in this vein, if you enjoy this kind of show, I have another idea. Do you want to hear my idea? Yeah. Oh Do you God, know yeah. of ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling? We have talked about. Yes, of course. So it is very much in that flavor. Okay. Very, very, very much in that flavor. Um, and I don't know if you know anything about Philadelphia sports fans. Um, I do. Via so you and our friends, but you, so you take that energy and apply it to essentially late night professional wrestling. Like these are grease the poles, blood bro. thirsty fans like they will they are not shy about telling you when you messed up when they didn't like what you did when they don't like you but they're also not shy of when they love something oh so yeah I, don't, they don't make them like philly i'm just gonna say that they, like one of a kind truly i mean and that I've both as I a learned compliment more and a derogatory statement. I mean, they, in both ways. And I've learned that more and more since I've moved here. <laughs> like, yeah. They don't make them like Philly. That is for sure. It is both a compliment and a threat. <laughs> Yo, honestly. Wow. Honestly. I see that. So, um, I'm... Spin-off gonna... series. Spin-off pod. So, I, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling ECW clips. Um, There's a lot of ECW... Mind you... ECW is running 
congruently with right. WWF right now, as well as WCW. All of these things are happening at the same time. Okay. Um, but I think I'm going to start pulling some of those like wilder ECW clips yeah, um, because pull the footage because I think uh, I, I think if you like that flavor, you're going to love the 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 vibe that is ECW. I love that. Who do people not like that flavor? Like, I like both. Like, I like what we're watching. But then also, like, sometimes you just need that. Like some people. I'll. Here's here's the argument with this. This is okay. a a a uh, <laughs> tangent that I didn't think we were going to get into, but we're going to get into it. Okay. So when we're talking about like that style of wrestling, which tends to be a lot more like hardcore, a lot more blood, a lot more weapons, a lot more <laughs> just all over the place. Uh -huh. What tends to be the argument with that is when do you get so far from wrestling? that it's no longer the same thing. Okay. Uh, a lot of wrestling like purists or like people who have like grown up in the tradition of wrestling up to this point hated ECW, Ooh. hated ECW because they very much so spit in the face of like a lot of traditions. They said, we're going to do things the way we want to do things and we're going to push the envelope in the quest of getting eyeballs on us mm. um because they knew that they couldn't compete on a production value with the wwf or wcw okay. wcw was backed by ted turner and was being filmed in like disney studios so right. and the wwf has been along even up to this point for like 50 years and was the main um it is the main wrestling promotion so they were mm -hmm. never going to be able to compete as far as like a oh like this is going to look as shiny and new on television. Right. So they said we're not even going to bother. We're not even going to go that route. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the envelope as far as like sexuality goes, as far as brutality goes, wow. like having hardcore matches. But what they did, which was really really intelligent on the part of Paul Heyman, who is the um you know the driving force behind ECW, is he brought in a lot of those. Um, really, really, really good technical wrestlers that we are going to come see in the WWF in the next couple years, in the next. Okay. So what ends up happening is they bring all of these wrestlers from like Japan and uh, Mexico and all of these other like really technical wrestlers. So like Chris Jericho came through ECW. Rey Mysterio oh. has come through. Um, oh. ECW. Um, Eddie Guerrero came through ECW. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of like really, really, really prominent wrestlers have come through ECW. Um, because what ends up happening is during this time period, we are, we we've talked about like the attitude like shift. Mm -hmm. Um, and what essentially the attitude era like, or at least the way that like I describe it, is a I like to describe it as like kind of a more polished version of what ECW was kind of doing, um, just in a more palatable way for a larger audience, if wow. that makes more sense. No, it um, does. Whereas like ECW was really, really catering to like hardcore wrestling fans. Um, but the thing about hardcore wrestling fans is the same thing about hardcore fans of anything. They will be there regardless. Mm. What the WWF -E does really well <clears throat> is pass a wide enough net that they can get the casual fan um, oh, oh so true so and that's that kind a lot of, of sense. like where the like <clears throat> extreme like beef comes from that is yeah. fascinating right it's like a study of human psychology at this it, point it's fantastic not to be like over dramatic about it but that's like really fascinating mm -hmm. yeah 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 so um, and i i love a story like that where it's like we didn't have all the stuff we had. We were already like working with a kind of like gritty base. Like a, so like we a just leaned... bu budget and yes, yeah, like... so we like leaned into it and just made it like we just like really we didn't pretend to be something we weren't. We just like really leaned into the grit that we right. were already working with. I kind of love that. And it, like I liken them to like Nirvana of wrestling. 
Whereas <laughs> like up until Nirvana, everything was like hair bands, flashy, lots of makeup, whatever. Yes. Nirvana comes is something very grunge. so different, so grunge and a lot more relatable to especially like the youth of that time where it's like, that's exactly how it looked. ECW looked grunge. It, like it, yeah and that's this is how so it, fascinating and that's how it like read and that's how they had to do it otherwise they weren't going to be able to compete at all so so yeah so that's a little that like, brief so little synopsis interesting of kind of like ecw um and how it fit into this kind of like time frame um I love that it's it's hard to encompass like how many things were going on between these three com- like promotions yeah of course all at the same time yeah. um But if you liked what this Saturday night show brought, ECW is definitely going to have some moments for you that you're going to really bite into. Ooh, I love that. Because, I mean, already right now, even just watching the, like, WWE is shocking to me. Like, I, I... Like some of the stuff that happens, I I gasp aloud. I am like always mm-hmm. like on the edge of my seat. I'm always like, what is happening? So I can't imagine like being shocked more. I keep saying that every week because I know that like it's just even just within the WWF, like I know we, still so much is going to happen. Right. But, but I can't imagine like watching something so gritty like that and just mm-hmm. being like Ugh. ripped up from the insides, like yeah, freaking yeah, yeah. out. Don't worry. We 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 will uh we'll Sounds dive like into some ECW. Don't worry. Okay. Um, but back to this episode. <laughs> so after Marlena's tits, we get a promo from Brett the Hitman Hart. And basically, it, it, he keeps it short and sweet. Mm-hmm. He's asked about Shawn Michaels. Um, and essentially, the vibe is, I wish a bitch would. Um, uh- and like, essentially, he goes, if he's going to stick his nose out there, I honestly hope he does get involved because I'd love to get my hands on him. Yep. So that was basically that on that. He was like, F around, find out. But I would love to be find out. Right. I would love 100%. to play the role of find out. 100%. And then he just goes, as far as Vader goes, like, yeah, he's big, but he's stupid. And like, then like, and that's oh, it. And that was it. <laughs> and that's it. That he said, yeah, he big, but he dumb. So. Bye. <laughs> He's like, you don't even matter. Bye. Literally so great. Everyone is losing their, losing it over there. Like, I love it. Oh, everyone's absolutely just like about to just like shoot out of like a, like a cannon, like, and just hit each other. Like, that's how it it feels. Like, everyone's just kind of like cocking up to just be released at the same time. And just hit each other. It's, it's really is that scene from Mean Girls. Where suddenly they're all like wild animals, like fighting in the mm. hallways and stuff. Like it really feels like that's what the Royal Rumble is going to be. Oh, it, it essentially is. Yeah. Um, so straight from that Bret Hart kind of backstage promo, we get into a Psycho Sid interview in the ring, which of course we were um, mentally preparing for as his music was playing. I love that his music is just like one playing the entire time once again. Yep. Just mm-hmm. like the whole thing apparently needs an overture. But I love <laughs> that um his music just like starts with that like stabbing sound and I just yes. think it's so funny. I don't know why. Yes. Cuz it's just like like a 1980s just like and you're like, "Okay, sir. I wonder All if that if right. like even picked that up." I'm like very curious cuz like I don't the think last it did. time I tried to make like a squeaky noise, it just didn't. Because I didn't hear anything. It was just her mouth going. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'll I'll add it in or something. Thank God. Um, that's what I want to hear. And then it was during this interview that we found out that it really is Psycho Sid who is <laughs> both big and dumb because. <gasps> oh man... <laughs> my god! <laughs> because the man, girl, he said it's either hit or be hitten oh my god it's either kick or be kicking and i you can't I make don't it know up. how to tell you or explain to you past <laughs> tense verbs and future slash present tense verbs i don't i don't think i'm it the was... one that needs <laughs> that should have explained this to you i feel like someone should have gotten to you sooner i um, i feel like we we didn't even have to explain like why don't why hit or be hit him 
pit or be hitting. I was like, this can't be real. This can't be really happening. And then, and then he like, follows up or be kick. kicking. <laughs> I, was, I was like, we're like, no, 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 please, please let this not be real. Oh, my, I literally have tears in my eyes. It was so bad. <laughs> Um, and essentially, he just goes in to just be like, I'm going to walk in the man at Royal Rumble. I'm going to walk out the man. I'm going to walk into your hometown, the underdog. I don't even care. Why? Because it's easy. Why? Because I am the master and the ruler. Um, they love him so much, though, the crowd. They I'm love like, really? Hit and be hitting did it for you? Hit that was what it be hitting. I want I want to get like a juicy, you know those like juicy track suits that just yeah. say like I just yeah. want hit or be hitting just right over my ass. I I just think it would be perfect. I'm hit just, or be hitting. I hit or be hitting is so crazy. Like I, can, <laughs> like, I I'm not over it. I'm he never was gonna so be dead over it. serious. Like he was literally like, that's the word. That's Literally, how you say if it. If I start next week's episode, just like "Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast," hit or be hitting. Like, I, I'm so- don't be new surprised. New slogan just dropped. Beep, beep, <laughs> but like, um, I just, I feel, I do feel bad because, like, that lives forever. Like, we are watching forever. it now, twenty years later. Like, mm-hmm. it lives forever. And like he said that, and you can watch it at any time on Peacock. <laughs> 100 percent this and is that, season five episode one episode one um probably like a little more than halfway through but like i feel because like i don't know like do you think he realized or someone said like eventually like hit or be hitting sid like i i, I wonder like, if he, he like said, came like, back like behind the curtain and the, everyone and was, was just like, like like avoiding eye contact just they have like the whiteboard up like okay let's go over yeah i was like hit (laughs) hit ing the best part is is it's it's the same word like it's it's the same it's hit or be hit that's it or be kicked but like that's it that's it Uh, that was hilarious i cannot um but while we are basking in the glory that is psycho sid (laughs) Shawn Michaels' music hits, and he comes out in a little, little, like a little pea coat, belted all up, and just looking fine, just looking all Rapunzel's kinds of fine, up. just like all smug with himself, just like Ooh, got one on you as he's like walking around ringside, and then the sexy boy jumps on the commentary table and gives us a little strip tease. He said, da, 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 da. like he was <laughs> all about, he took off that Pico. He's like shirtless under and I some like it. acid wash jeans. Oh, Love it. He was just absolutely being, he's just, just stepping up the petty game. Another level. He said, I mean, he literally was like, let me get on. Like he said to Vince, he was like, oh, is that my chair? Is that for me? And then he's like, he just stepped on it, stepped onto the table. I just... Your coat's coming off. And I was like, oh my God. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest part is like, I will give this to Psycho Sid. He is like, he does play his role well. Because right. like, he was just like doing his weird psycho laugh. But then he like waved at Shawn Michaels, like as if. Right. He like was a like little, a little kid, kid at like... the playground. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, um, <laughs> we're like, wait, aren't you guys doing? You guys hate each other? And like, they, like, aren't you they, crazy? They exchanged some words, but it was just like kind of funny. Like he was just like, <laughs> the wave. And I then can't. Psycho Sid, um, he's like, oh, like this is exactly like what I'm talking about. And then he goes into this apology, um, which is essentially says like, I'm sorry for what I'm going to do, and then just leaves. And you just know, you just you just know. know some some shenanigans are about to occur. Oh, one hundred percent. And know the this shenanigans man is going to come back and be absolutely ludicrous. Yes, and the shenanigan then, was absolutely ludicrous. It absolutely was. And then the shenanigan that didn't occur, which I was really upset about, is that Shawn Michaels still on the table. He came oh. in without a shirt, with just the coat. The coat comes off. Then Shawn Michaels starts unzipping his pants. He starts undoing oh, yeah. his belt and unzipping his pants. And I was like. Oh my god! Oh my! God. They cut to commercial. Mm-hmm. They, they said, cut. I'm not to gonna commercial. give it to you that easy. I they was said, livid. They said buy the magazine. I swear to God, they said, "Hey, Playgirl." I was livid, and then by the time we come back, everyone's seated and appropriately dressed. Really, really infuriating, but really upsetting. Really I can't win them all. It. Yeah, you know. You win some, you lose some. Throw the gals in the gays, like something. Just throw, throw well, us a bone. <laughs> really anything. Swear. Uh, so, in our main event, we had Brett the Hitman Hart taking on 
Vader. Bret Hart came out in his little all pink ensemble. So I love it. Cute. I love the all pink ensemble. I it's love cute. the all pink. HBK is, of course, sits himself right on commentary. Um, conspicuous by his absence is Jim Cornette, which we yes. find out. Best um, reason ever. Best reason ever. So it cuts to WWF Superstars, which is another weekly show. Not going to get into. Um, where Jim Cornette is essentially on commentary talking all this ish because vader will be taking on the undertaker at the royal rumble so he's basically just going on and on about what vader is going to do to the undertaker and we get a classic undertaker gong blackout and then he shows up not inches behind jim Cornette, just waiting for his pudgy ass to turn around he said he's hello so jim Cornette's like absolutely having himself like a conniption as he does he turns around and boo there's the undertaker wow fantastic and then he proceeds to throw jim Cornette into the ring and pile drive uh tombstone pile drive him thus keeping him out of action this week jim Cornette is dead (laughs) he looked like it i will say he looked dead like Good job selling, Jim. Good job selling. He literally, Undertaker, God bless you, sir, took time out of his beautiful day to tombstone Jim Cornette for all of us. Oh, really? Thank Thank you you so much. Right, right, right. Thank you for doing what you do for the good of the people. I respect it and have nothing but good things and feelings. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) That was Kelsey's. <laughs> just my love letter yeah to the undertaker to the un- dear well, undertaker uh, so uh after that it kind of we during the match which is also phenomenal because so good so good because vader is vader so he's just this like behemoth of a man just yeah absolutely you know hard to take down hard to move around hard to avoid because there's yep. so much mass yeah so there's that and of course there's brett you know trying to be tactical about it, evading out of corners when he can, getting, like, Mm -hmm. very strategic reversals. But it cuts to Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is watching in the back, who hasn't really had much to do with much right now. And that is and should be a little alarming to literally everyone. Of course it should be. Absolutely. Um, Shawn Michaels was... Just an absolute gem on commentary as Ugh. he is. Um, Jerry the King Lawler makes some kind of uh remark about writing down all of these witticisms that Shawn Michaels has uh been saying about Bret Hart and showing it to him. And Shawn Michaels uh quips back, or you could just steal them like you always do and use them on next week's show. And I Ooh. was dead. I had no idea that Jerry the King was getting scalped today. I swear to God crazy blood on the floor that it was so quick and it was so vile Ooh, mm. my we were both like oh did he been really? shot i've been hit it was so, so good as the match is progressing uh psycho sid comes out and grabs a cameraman by the Girl. shirt and drags him backstage as no that it can't be good is going on Stone Cold Steve Austin runs down the entryway and stuns Bret Hart just on the ramp, just Oop. leaving him dead on the floor Oop. so that Vader could come into the ring, dragging Bret and perform a Vader bomb on him and then getting the victory. So wild. Honestly, was not expecting. Not expected. And like Stone Cold came out of nowhere because I guess like Psycho Sid grabbed the camera that was on the ramp. So, like, you missed then, or, yes, Psycho Sid grabbed the camera that was, like, on the ramp. So then, like, you missed Stone Cold, like, run in and, like, the camera, like, there was Was, a camera. Was, like, trying to catch up. Yeah. Yes. And it was, like, I was, like, is that Stone Cold? I was, like, like, in the back corner over there? Like, I'm so confused. He literally, like, he stunned him and left. Like, he was, like. Yeah, it was a uh, a drive-by. Literally. So. Um, so Vader wins that match leading into his match with The Undertaker, which is great. Um, but. Uh, it was alluded to earlier in the match that Bret Hart kind of needed this win. He's kind of been on the like losing end of a lot. And it has yes. been like called out during the match that like, he's essentially like a marked man in the Royal rumble. Like he has yeah. so many people that have beef with him 
that like it could come from anywhere essentially right. um and i love that uh sean michaels after that comment was like uh they was like oh he like really needs this win and i was like he was like we all need a win like no one comes oh out here God. being like oh i want i really need to lose right now really need like, a loss what, right now that, that's that's like, what i really need to do like and i was just like oh my god you petty bitch i can't I oh my god so i know funny because it's so true it's like one of those obvious statements where it's like that's not necessarily what i meant but like yeah obviously we always want to win but it's right. like not necessarily the sentiment, but it's like those kinds of comments that are just like they really just like, like eat them Ugh. up. I yeah, them up. same. Oh my god. Mm. Uh, so when we finally get to Psycho Sid and where he's dragged the cameraman, he has this poor cameraman, poor poor Pete Lothario. Oh, uh, true. He power true, true. bombs him through what is essentially like a locker room bench, like so a it wooden, looks like yeah. Like a, so, um. That happens, and you see both Sean jump out of commentary, and then you see Jose Lothario jump out of the Spanish commentary desk and start running to the back. Oh my god, so, so sad. And the Tragic. whole time, Psycho Sid's like, I don't want to do this. Like, this is going to hurt me to do this. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, mm, shut I, up. I think not. I don't I'm, think so. I, 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 I actually I, don't. I'm feeling like you're pretty fine. <laughs> I, I actually <laughs> like, think you're in like really great health. Like, if you were to ask me, like, if um, you were to like, Put me oh, that task. It was wild. So by the time so shocking. they like replay it one more time, and then by the time they cut back to backstage, <laughs> Jose is there, Shawn Michaels is there, and he is pissed. You Mad see him though. like knocking over the like wooden thing. He's like, he's like, where are you? You, you like chicken shit. Like he's like, and then First he goes thing, into the camera, and the like the audio from like whatever is just like all messed up. So he's like cutting in and out, and he's like cursing at the camera, like expletives yep. because, because and like thank god the audio was cut because like there would have been some fines that day lots so, of fines and then kelsey mentions uh which just i had not really paid attention to and that savi she goes there goes savio vega on the ground floor once again like just this man is everywhere he is he's I... like he's your every man this man just shows up everywhere He's, ready. He was, he's the first one in a fight. He's the first one when you need a tag team partner. He's the first replacement you think of. Someone gets hurt backstage. He's like down there apparently like tending first to aid. You're like, it's where to God, like providing like medical care. Like he's flying in from the rafter. He's appears out of the blue. Like he's always like, I, I was like, is that Savio Vega again? I cannot. <laughs> Where he's basically I that it. man. I literally like he is like the vigilante of the WWF at this point. Like it's no, so honestly, and he was like holding Pete like that was his child. He was like somebody get the paramedics. Like and he's like holding his head. I was like Savio, you don't even have stake in this game. Like what are you even doing here? I love that guy. Honestly, I love that guy. Honestly. But I I just want to say, first of all, I love Shawn Michaels. The way that he ran when he saw Pete Ram. was about to get put through the table or the wooden whatever it was. And then the heartbreaking tragedy was Jose Lothario's like old man jaw like trying to run like to save oh. his son. My God. Uh, storytelling. Was, He's so good. It, it was so good. I I get so outraged on their behalf. It's crazy. Honestly, and it's like, crazy. And that's how you know he's good. Like you're I pissed know. for him. That's how, like, You're pissed for him. Shawn Michaels was like leaping over chairs and ta like it, it was it gave like almost like Lion King energy for some reason Very, like, like yeah like when Sim he's running the like back to Pride Rock <laughs> or that yeah 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 like he's do 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 yes exactly but like oh stampede Amazing. in the gorge Simba's down there <laughs> track star <laughs> hey man just can't all right it guys ends. it just ends like it that. just ends like that just it goes black everyone. Everyone's just tending Sean to Michael's Pete cursing Lothario. into the camera. In the camera, Pete Lothario is dead. Well, not really, grievously injured, and like everyone's right. gunning for Psycho Sid. Where is he? Blah blah blah. Ends. Black. Ends. Leaves you. Leaves you high and dry. So, 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 so now we have gotten to the uh, the point where we would like to hear your tentative prediction for the Royal Rumble and your reasoning. Okay. Okay. Now, first of all, in my we defense, have, before we start this, we have one more week, so new uh, information could sway this. True. So, 
this is my tentative prediction and then after next week i will like lock it lock it in right so right now and please just keep in mind i'm literally new to wrestling this is the name of the podcast so no one come for me this is so wrong i for some reason want to say bret hart here's why because Mm -hmm. one they talked about a lot this episode how a lot of people are gunning for him how he really needs a win um he is like obviously still gunning for the title like there's a lot at and obviously whoever wins the royal rumble right gets a shot at the title Mm -hmm. okay so after i and i just want to let you guys know how committed i was this i asked xavier this morning to screenshot the list of every of all 30 participants in the Royal Rumble because I was too scared to look it up because I thought it would tell me who won. It 100% would have. It would yes. have. I, so I, I got the list looking this it morning. up, I was like immediately like. Mm. Uh, so I have not looked it up. So I had the list, like the screenshot list and I was going through and I was like, I don't know why. I just like feel like, first of all, like the fact that Bret Hart, if I'm like going back in his story, like he was gone for six months. He has this like amazing comeback. And then he's, like, kind of been, like, knocked out at the knees, like, a lot since his Mm -hmm. comeback. And I just feel like he really needs, like, something like this, something so crazy where, like, everyone is gunning for him, but he comes out on top anyway Mm -hmm. to, like, kind of solidify the fact that, like, not only does he deserve a shot at the title, like, he deserves the title. Like, even though he was gone, like, he's still the wrestler that everybody loves he's he's doesn't have ring rust he's like really still that guy like the excellence mm-hmm. of execution and so i feel like having him win the royal rumble would just be crazy especially like i said everyone is gunning for him they made it that a point so much like they said it so much tonight and he has like really the odds stacked against him so i feel like he's really like an underdog right now so that's my tentative hurt all right one my tentative Guys, so this assessment. is Kelsey's tentative pick for the Royal Rumble is Brett the Hitman Hart. Now, this is just a a plea from from me, the host, and uh, my very very new to wrestling co host. Please don't tell her. Oh don't my God! Her. Please, don't we've tell come her. so far. We've, we've come, come so far. So far. We're so don't close. Don't do this. So, uh, we know. I I know that watching thirty year old wrestling is going to come with some spoilers. This is true. However, Somehow I don't know this though. The joy that I get from watching someone experience wrestling for the first time <laughs> is unmatched. So Aww. for Kelsey's sake, for for the sake of the show, don't spoil it. No spoilers. Don't no spoil spoilers. It. All right, guys. So that has been this week's episode of the New to Wrestling podcast. As always, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for listening, watching, commenting, wherever you find us. Um, We will be updating you on the Sports Podcast Awards. Thank you again uh, to the Sports Podcast Awards for the nomination. Congratulations to all the other nominees in all of the other categories. There's you know we there's lots of sports we they run down them um we appreciate the nod and we will do our best to uh earn it yeah we'll we'll keep we'll keep bringing it hopefully we'll keep bringing it all (laughs) right guys so we will catch you next week thank you very much have a good night guys see you bye